Debbie's going to show us how to make this stunning necklace here. Um, what would, how would you describe this necklace, Debbie? This is something called an illusion necklace. It means right. that the beads just hover and you don't really see the beading thread quite so much. You really don't, do you? You really don't see the beading thread at all. Fantastic. OK, how do we do this then? Right, OK. For this you will need uh, some beading thread. You will need a selection of beads. You'll need quite a few crimps for this one. Mm -hmm. You'll need a couple of spacer beads, some uh, jump rings and a clasp. All right? Right. So to start off with, you need two pieces of beading thread. You need them long enough to go from the point of the necklace right the way around the back of the neck. All right? And you need one slightly longer than the other. And you'll see why in just one second. So I'm going to take the longest piece of beading thread, which is probably about 50 centimetres. And I'm going to place on a crimp. Now these crimps I need, whoops, these crimps I need to be right on the end of my beading thread. Okay. So I'm going to hold them in my pliers and I'm going to take it right to the end Gosh. of my beading thread. Okay. Now if you can't quite get that, don't worry, you can just trim it off to be right on the end of your thread. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to place on one of my beads and Beautiful. a spacer bead and another bead. Beads are alive, Debbie. They are. They don't want to stay on here at all, <laughs> do they? And then uh, another crimp. So feed on the crimp and I'm going to squash that again with my pliers really firmly. Then you need to evenly space out your design. So I'm going to pop another crimp on, but before I let it fall, you can use a piece of card or a piece of paper, and you just place that in line with your previous crimp. Right. And when you let this one fall, it just oh. hits the top of the paper, and then you squash the crimp again. So you get regular spaces. That's right. So that is your next bead Good tip. to go on. So you put your bead, mm -hmm. you put your spacer, you put this second bead and another crimp. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where you want your necklace to part. So you take your second shorter length of thread and you feed that down that crimp and down through the bead. Okay. Through the so first bead, just through the, the top first one? bead, just through the top bead. Okay. All right. And then take your ah, pliers. Right. And crimp. And that Brilliant. now separates your threads. Oh, that's clever. Okay. All right. And take your two threads now. So we're we on this section here, Debbie. So we've gone you from are. this bottom section. That's right. And you're now working up your necklace. Okay. You're now parting now to start right. the next part okay. of the design. Yeah. So then you want to take a couple more crimps and you place one on either side to start your necklace. Do the same as we did before. There's your trusty bit of paper. Your trusty bit of paper <clears throat> and just let those crimps fall until they sit on the top of the card. Okay? Lovely. Just change hands there. Just sit on the top of the card and then you crimp and you know they're in the same place. Mm -hmm. So you take those off, there we go, and you continue on with your pattern. So I'm going to put a larger bead and this time I'm going to use one of the a tiny, tiny little bead and another bead here and that's my pattern of beads that I'm Lovely. going to continue going yeah. up. The necklace. So I'm just going to do the one side, put a couple more on, put a crimp, squash that crimp and then use my spacer once more and put a crimp onto the end of my beading thread. Again, go on, can't see here, that's better. That's okay. <laughs> there we go, whoops. So you're They're using alive. that piece of paper again as a as a guide. As a measure. It's a really that's a really good tool because that's one thing which would conf would would worry me slightly getting getting, getting each even. section. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the easiest thing I've found 
as a spacer and obviously you can use different size cards you can do the course, big spaces yeah. depending on the size of the beads and what looks good so then I'm going to take another bead brilliant and one of the smaller beads again and thread on mm -hmm. and, and then one of the larger and ones and a medium bead whoops medium bead and then I'm going to pop on another crimp good stuff so you carry on that technique and right up right to the top. until the top. And then on the other side as well, I assume. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And then when you get to a point that your beads are here on your neck, you don't really want to put any more beads once you get to this, um, the, the top of your, your neck here. Around the back of the neck, I haven't put any beads at all. I've just left it just with beading thread. If you turn, if I turn that around. Yeah, please do, please do. And you just put a crimp on the end and not put any beads at the back. So yeah. when you get to um, a length of a necklace that you like, you leave your beading thread and then you pop on your, um, your toggle clasp. So I'm going to now pop on the toggle clasp as though I've reached the, the end of my design. Yeah. Pop on your crimp, take one half of your toggle clasp, feed that through beading thread through and back through that crimp, take your flat nose pliers and squash that crimp really hard and firm, make sure it's nice and secure. Take your cutters, cut as close to that crimp as possible and you repeat with the other half of your clasp on the other side of your necklace and there's your finished illusion Isn't necklace. that fantastic? And using minimal, minimal beads as well. There's the clasp at the back. Such a fantastic design. And it is exactly that. It is an illusion necklace. Those, those beads look like they're just hovering around your neckline. Just beautiful. Thank you so much for showing us that, Debbie. That's brilliant. Sure. Have a go, everyone. <laughs>